I wanted to provide a little bit of, uh, I guess, an updated view on what you should be expecting for LumaFusion on Android. Um, I am a very heavy user of LumaFusion on iOS and iPadOS, and also the, um, the, the Mac OS, the M1 Mac Mini that I have here can download the iPad version and you can use it on, on your Mac Mini. I like it a lot, but one issue I'm having is storage. Um, and so I was, I'm evaluating this Android tablet. It's a Samsung Tab S8. It has a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, which is equivalent to an iPad 10. So the, the latest version of, a, of the lowest tier iPad, $350, all those performance that this has is what the same performance of the iPad 10, but this is just has more RAM to work with, which is going to be a bit more useful. Now I'm going to talk about this in the context of Samsung DeX, as well as this Android device, because there are some little gotchas here that you may not have for your Android device. First off, you're getting like, I want to say like 90% of all the features um, that you would commonly use for LumaFusion iOS in here, with the exception that there is no ability to purchase any additional packages. Uh, you can, and you do have access to Storybox. I highly recommend that if you want a cheap option for stock uh, photography, stock audio, stock music, that type of stuff. Because if you go to LumaFusion or Storybox separately, and you pay for an unlimited download. It's $30 a month for an annual, and you have to pay that out annually. With, with uh, Storyblocks inside of LumaFusion, it's $10 a month. And then um, you can sh you get free stuff already, basically. All, all the free stuff that was available for iOS is available for Android as well. So you get free music, free photos, all this other stuff. But if you want to pay for it, you do get a, a, a trimmed down library of what is actually on Storyblocks. I don't want to make, make that confusing at all. It's not like you get that full access, but it's $10. I think it's fine for what you pay. You get what you pay for. Now, in terms of the things that I that jumped out to me, like, oh, this is really nice to have an Android. Um, if your Android phone or tablet has an external monitor support, you can do video out to a TV. They have this extra icon here you can click. I can't show it to you because this is not on this screen. It goes out to your, your computer monitor. It's connected to your Android tablet or phone and shows you the full screen of what this is. Like, if I was to double-click this, imagine this to be that your computer screen or your uh, your TV monitor that would be more color accurate than whatever you might be seeing on your phone or give you a better representation of what you would see on the TV. So I really like that feature. I think it's really cool. It's it's available for iOS, but you need the pro variants uh, of the iPad to, to even leverage that for video out. The M1 Air as well uh, has that, that feature enabled. And then also, uh, I was able to select an external folder for LumaFusion. This, you can already directly link your, your videos into LumaFusion. Unlike iOS, which is limited, where it has to copy that video into LumaFusion's folder, you have direct access to where that video footage is. So if you're taking an external camera, you're doing your video shooting out, you have it on an SD card, uh, it can work off the SD card. And you can render your video to that X, X, uh, SD card. So I have a 256 gig SD card already plugged in. So if I do something like export now, I can choose to export the movie, choose linked folders, and then choose the, I got to move over this thing. Over, hold on. I export it out one more time and one more time. And then you choose the folder you're going to put it to, use this folder and allow. So then you can start to export in, unlike on iOS and iPadOS, where you have to leave this window as is. You cannot do anything else on your device. I can go watch a YouTube video. I can go, you know, to the web, browse stuff. I can go look at my gallery stuff on my, my photos. And this is still all rendering in the background. I'm not going to keep this up and running. The one gotcha I ran into was that this tablet actually had uh, forced close the YouTube because it was overheating. It literally said it was getting too hot to do, to do the rendering while also watching YouTube. But yeah, all, all that was really awesome to see that these little like Android perks uh, everything else has been great. The, the, this is a 4K video, 30 frames a second. I've stacked three or four of them on this device. They all play fluently, um, flawlessly, really great. I will say if you push this into DeX mode and you have LumaFusion running on your DeX monitor, not on the, on the tablet, this rendered icon here becomes really, really low resolution. I would say it's in an unusable state. 
So I can't use LumaFusion in Dex mode because this does not render properly with an exception. Um, it can still kind of render at a high enough resolution to be usable, but this is where the issues happen for where it starts to fall apart for that 90% part of LumaFusion being here. Um, I'm going to go straight to the issue I was talking about here, which is in the, like, I don't know, call it the blur section. Blur works fine and everything else, but it's the sharpen feature that's a problem. So all I did was here was just do some color work. Um, that's what you see there. And then I went to sharpen it, and it just adds noise. You do unsharpen, it adds more noise. I, I can, you know, disable these. It just adds noise. It, it's not doing the actual filter. So I'm not, that fil these two filters are broken. They, they are not working properly at all. And then if you are a LumaFusion user, you may notice an icon is missing here. There is no video stabilization. So if you're shooting on a regular camera, not your phone, that doesn't have any stabilization filter feature built in, you cannot stabilize it here. Uh, another feature that I almost use on all of my YouTube videos, as well as Sharpen, because Sharpen is useful for YouTube's compression stuff, is the audio. So if I go to my audio section and I go to, what is this called, filters, the noise suppression filter is missing. So if I want to do a quick voiceover and I don't want to mic myself up uh, to get rid of the background noise preemptively, I don't have that option anymore. And these are two big features. These were big features that sold LumaFusion 4. Um, and unfortunately, they're not here. Then, speaking of LumaFusion features, LumaFusion 5 is currently not on Android. I do not know of an ETA. And more to the point, I do not know, even if LumaFusion 5 was to be released, which there's still some free benefits of it anyways, the advanced keyframing features, because you can already keyframe in LumaFusion on Android, but it's basic keyframing stuff. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to buy that because you can't buy any packages right now from the settings or preferences area. There's like a, there was a packages section, section you can go to to purchase a Final Cut Pro export. So if you wanted to start it on your device and move it to a Mac computer to edit on Final Cut Pro or just Final Cut, uh, you can't do that because there's no way to buy that package on here. There was one more other package. I forgot the name of it, but you can't buy it here either. Those were both Mac OS specific packages anyways. So I understand it not being available for Android, but I get a little worried that they're going to release 5.0 eventually at some point, And then that advanced keyframe feature may not be available for Android. I, I don't know who, who knows, but I'm very hopeful and I really, really love LumaFusion. I, I'm very happy with the software. I prefer this over CapCut because I can do multi-track editing, all the audio work I do, all the color correction work. It just, it's, it's so upfront and, and easy to work with. I've tried CapCut, but in order to use the features I'm normally used to using, I have to pay for their pro, which is like $9 a month a full year that's like 70 80 dollars for the discounted version and you can just do a one-time 30 bucks so and it, it's a lifetime you're, you're you're buying additional packages down the road but you know 20 dollars for advanced keyframing is not that bad considering CapCut is again 80 dollars a year uh if you do the the yearly subscription 